and welcome back everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for our fourth installment of the Throne of Eldraine Brewers set review. We are on red now. This is where we take a look at all 269 cards here in Throne of Eldraine and give an in-depth analysis on how they could be used in standard and what kind of impact they could have on the format. So we'll be talking about every single card and how it could be used. We've already gone through white, blue, and black so far. You can see the order at the top of the screen. We have red, then green, and then multicolor artifacts and lands are all gonna be jammed together in the sixth video. All right, so we're giving each card a grade as well, a letter grade, based on how much standard play uh, that I think that it's gonna have. Uh, giving each card uh, A, B, C, or D, depending on how uh, like how much play we think we'll have, or if it's just no play whatsoever, we're giving it an L for limited. Um, I've already gone through the, the grading scale on the first three videos, so won't go back through them through uh, for these next three videos. Hopefully y'all saw uh, those, but also if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can uh, go down below to the in to the information panel, the, the, I don't know, the description box, I guess. And there's going to be a link to the Google spreadsheet, uh, that has all of the ratings for the cards on there as well. Plus it has the grading scale in the front. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. We got red kicking off with barge in a one minute instant that where target attacking creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Each attacking non-human creature gains trample until end of turn. So this is a this is a combat trick where you know you you could use it to you know pump your attacking creature. You have to have a whole lot of other creatures attacking also that you want them to gain trample. So they have to be large creatures. You can't be really attacking with one ones because giving one ones trample isn't useful. So you're going to need other uh, large creatures here. So we're not really playing it in like a cavalcade deck. Um, Red had a pump spell that already gave a creature plus three, plus three, and attacking creature plus that. And so like this is going to be worse than that unless you can really take advantage of the other part. So maybe, yeah, so it's like, like maybe winning tricks for knights. I mean, I think if I'm knights, I'm going to want to be playing like um, uh, the white one, Unbreakable Formation. I think that's where I'd want to be there. So I, th I think this is just an L. Yeah, I'm just giving this an L here um, as just a, a limited rating. Of course, whenever I give a card a limited rating, that doesn't mean you should be playing it in limited. I'm just saying that's it's not a standard card. So that's what Barge In is going to get. And unfortunately, that's what our Wolverine is going to get here as well. A two mana, two one. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, Blood Haze Wolverine gets plus one, plus one, and gains first strike until end of turn. Pretty cool. If this was just three mana, three, two, first strike all of the time, we wouldn't play it. But it would be uh, better in limited. All right, blow your house down. Two and a red sorcery. Up to three target creatures can't block this turn. Destroy any of them that are walls. Well, I guess y'all wall is going to uh, be gone, but we're still not playing this card. So another limited card. All right, Bone Crusher Giant. We finally got to a playable card, only the fourth card, so not so bad. All right, Bone Crusher Giant. Here's a rare. Two and a red for a 4-3. Hey, Hawkeye. I guess Hawkeye wants to join in on the stream. Two and a red for a 4-3 that says whenever it becomes the target of a spell noted that's just spell not ability so you know it can get um i mean tucked by big teferi bounced by little teferi i don't you know like, i know the big teferi is not in the format but i'm just saying so you can still get targeted by an ability uh like cavalier of night can kill this but anyway when it gets targeted by a spell it deals two damage to that spell's controller but that's not why we're excited for just the three mana four three for that we also got stomp over here and stomp is a two mana instant damage can't be prevented this turn it deals two damage to any target so it's an upgraded shock but it's two mana so we have two mana upgraded shock 
Um, is that as good as Lightning Strike? No, I'd rather have Lightning Strike than the damage can't be prevented. What the damage can't be prevented clause, that's important against like protection. If your opponent has a Sir Eulen Drake, for example, uh, in play, and you attack with a red creature and they block your red creature, you can then cast Stomp here and deal damage to like the opponent or you know stomp the opponent or stomp whatever, you know, deal two damage to something. Obviously you cannot target Sir Eulen Drake because it's protection from red. But what protection does whenever creatures are in combat, like the red creature is already in combat with the Sir Eulen Drake, they're going to deal damage to each other, but because it has protection from red, the damage is prevented. However, this says damage can't be prevented, so it would kill the protection from red creature. So that's a way to get around um, a protection from red creature, is uh, have, the two, have it get in combat with a red creature and then say the damage can't be prevented. Um... So yeah, it would. So yeah, God's willing, the same kind of thing. If if you go into combat, and then if God's willing says pro red on a creature, same the exact same thing. Then you can have it do it. Otherwise, you still can't target protection creatures though. Also, um, but yeah. So this is a, just a a good spell. I mean, I'd rather have lightning strike than stomp, but you we get stomp and then plus you get bone crusher giant attached to it a, a three mana four three is a good attacker um you know four power can trigger your kiora i don't know if you're putting in a kiora deck uh, no that's my water <laughs> okay wants to drink my water that's my water so yeah bone crusher giant easy a for us here very good card hawkeyes being a bone crusher giant crushing this microphone um, but yeah, this is going to see play in a lot of different decks. This is just a really good card. All right, Brimstone Trebuchet. Two and a red for a 1-3 defender with reach. You can tap it to deal one damage to each opponent. And whenever a knight enters the battlefield under your control, you may untap it. Good card for limited. Bad card for constructed. Let's give it the limited rating. Burning Yard Trainer is a 5-mana 3-3 three, three, Trample Haste. When it enters the battlefield, another target knight you control gains plus 2, plus 2, and gains Trample and Haste until end of turn. I'm going to go ahead and give this one my limited rating as well. Claim the Firstborn. All right, we got a 1-mana Sorcery. Gain control of target creature with CMC 3 or less until end of turn. Untap the creature. It gains Haste until end of turn. All right, so, um, so this is... So this is active treason that can only target creatures CMC three or less that only costs one mana. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think charging monster sword is better than this, but I guess, I mean, I guess you know because it's a it's a three three and it, it's another target knight. You can't you can't target itself, but yeah, I mean, I, I'd rather I'd rather have monster sword than this card. So you think claim is very good, really good. So yeah, so you want, um, yeah, you definitely want sacrifice effects for sure. Uh, if we're playing claim the firstborn here, uh, it gives you the mana to have the sacrifice effect as well because it's only one mana, so you don't have to worry about like having a sacrifice effect on the battlefield and then stealing. But yeah, of course, with priests of forgotten gods, um, if you're like a really aggressive deck and you can get that extra damage in, it's always nice to kind of have these effects. Um, I don't think I'm not that high on the card though. Like think of how little play active treason sees, like just chopping off two mana of active treason and then making it conditional. Does that suddenly mean it's, it's going to see play like active treason has been in like every format ever. Basically it's always in core sets. Um, yeah, we do have fling. Like, are we, are we really putting a claim plus fling deck together where we're like, you know, have, try to have like those two card combo um i i think this is real janky i'm going with like a d here a card that you'll rarely see in standard but you know sometimes you play against the the claim fling deck or whatever i think this is this is just a d but it's it's not completely unplayable as far as an l goes but it's pretty close i don't think i will ever play claim the firstborn but you know i could have said that again about a whole lot of cards that we've played before here so you never know what could happen 
All right, Crystal Slipper. One and a red for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has haste. And it's only one equi equip cost. So I like this just one equip cost. Uh, you know, so you can just spend one more mana to give your creature haste and give it an extra power. And you can kind of keep on doing that each. If you just play one above the, the curve each time, you can just keep on giving your creatures haste. Um, that's not bad. Is that worth a card, like an entire card? Because, you know, you we are only you know, playing 60 cards and like, let's say you have that, but then you're, you know, it doesn't do anything on its own. So you're playing a card that doesn't do anything on its own. And then your first creature that you play after this, then your, your opponent gets to trade, you know, one for one for, with your creatures, like with removal or whatever. You don't have that extra creature in your hand to, to try to pull it, pull ahead. You instead have the crystal slipper. Oh, I do love haste Cranko. Haste Cranko is nice. Um, of course we have like, we've seen how, uh, rhythm of the wild basically doesn't see any play at all. Um, but you know, it sees a little bit, you know, rhythm of the wild sees a little bit, but that gives all your creatures haste. And that's just a three mana card. This is like two mana. And then plus you have to start paying one for each creature kind of thing. So I'll go... I'll go D minus. I was going to give this an L for limited, but y'all kind of convinced me with Cranko. Give giving Cranko some some shoes. <laughs> All right, maybe we'll go D minus. Just a little bit better than L. All right, Ember Cleave. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, give me some haste Ilrog for sure. Ember Cleave. So we have four red, red legendary artifact equipment with flash. Costs one less to cast for each attacking creature you control. Whenever Ember Cleave enters the battlefield, you may attach it to target creature you control. I guess it's not a may, it just does. And then also equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, has double strike and trample. And then if you want to equip it somewhere else, you pay three mana to equip. I really like this card. I think this card's really strong. So we're giving a creature... Double Strike and Trample in plus one, plus one. Um, there's a, a few different decks that could really use this. Uh, you know, of course, we really want to be ahead. We want to be attacking to make our Ember Cleave cost less. But obviously, like, the Knights is what people think immediately because there's there's some Knights that we'll see in a little bit, like Fervent Champion. They care about the equipment cost. Um, but then, yeah, just like... Uh, just... Um, uh, Gruel, like somebody said, Gruel Spellbreaker, just like in Gruel decks. Yeah, give this to Gruel Spellbreaker. Give it to Ilharg. I don't know. Just give it to like your regular Gruel creatures. Like, that's awesome. Uh, thinking about like Rakdos, uh, putting this on a Rotting Regisaur. Imagine Rotting Regisaur being eight power double strike trample. They're dead. They're just dead. Like, that's it. Like, the, the game's over. Put this on Rotting Regisaur. The game is literally over. Just done. Can't, nobody can come back from that. It's like turn one land war elf that ends the game. So yeah, like there's just a you know uh, questing beast. You know get this on a questing beast. Absolutely, you know double strike, death touch, trample uh, that also deals damage to like the the other uh, planeswalkers. Uh, yeah, master master of pranks with double strike or uh, thief of sanity with double strike. If you want to go, if you want to go that route. Um, yeah, like there's that those are some some things you could do in life. Um so yeah, uh there's some there's some uh pretty good cards, good creatures. Now, those scenarios are of course assuming you are attacking. So you're already kind of ahead you're attacking and then you have the mana for Ember Cleave as well. But really Hawkeye. Hawkeye just decided to attack my hand which uh startled me a little bit and then i just knocked my glass of water here that's your fault hawkeye this little mess you made that's your fault for biting my hand um but yeah so ember cleave has a lot of good stuff that it can that it can have uh, a lot of good stuff it can do i should probably my mouse is a little wet here i should probably clean this off 
All right, so how much play is this going to see? Not a ton. Like, this is not a card that you really want to play a lot of. You don't ever want to draw a second Embercleave. So it's like, do you really want two in your deck? Like, you don't really want to draw a second one ever. And then, so, like, you're probably looking at, like, a one of most all the time whenever you're playing this card. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye Master of Franks. Yeah, Hawkeye is the new wrinkle. So I'm thinking it's kind of like a one of in, in like different decks that like helps push you over the top. Move that book. Okay. All right. So what are we giving this for a grade? So a B. Are we thinking this is like Voracious Hydra, Scampering Scourger level, like a B? Uh, just a card that sees a good amount of play, different decks, and like a support role. Um, probably around there. I'm thinking a B. That sounds that sounds about right because it could go in a lot of different decks, but it's it's just like a one, maybe a two of at most in a set of decks. Like a lot of a lot of good different ratings here on that. Let's go with B. Embereth Paladin. Man. Now my arm is just on water. <clears throat> Alright, so this is this thing's just gonna be a limited card. <laughs> three and a three and a red for a four one haste human knight it has adamant that it will enter the battlefield with an additional one one counter if you spend three red mana on it. And it's just going to be an L. How about Embereth Shieldbreaker? If we're kicking, if we're uh, staying with the Embereth cards. So Shieldbreaker here is a two mana, two one, but it also has battle display uh, so an adventure for a red mana. You can destroy target artifact. I like this card quite a bit. I think this is a good sideboard card uh, for night decks, but also for just, for just like mono red. Uh, I think this is a, a solid, um, sideboard card i think the the destroy artifact cards in red right now aren't that's aren't that special i think this is kind of the best one um it's it's like a worse reclamation sage kind of um where it doesn't destroy enchantments also but however destroying artifacts could be important we've seen like these legendary artifacts uh that, that all look kind of good you know we have like your ember cleave and your your great henge that we haven't talked about yet but there's a lot of artifacts um by a lot, I mean those legendary ones. So, uh, yeah, good against Glass Casket for sure. Uh, real good against Glass Casket. And then, you know, like the, there's a bunch of blue artifacts. If, if like, the blue artifacts see play, um, you know, like your 2-mana 5-4 and stuff like that, this can work there. So I think this is a, a pretty solid sideboard card. It's not uh, – it's narrow, but still regularly used. So I think this is a C. I think this is like a Sir Eulen Drake. It's it's a narrow sideboard card that could just be a regularly used sideboard card. So I think this is a definition of a C. Here. Ferocity of the Wilds. Two and a red for an enchantment. Attacking non-human creatures you control have plus one, plus zero, and have trample. So you'd have to, you want to play this in like a a, gr a gruel deck with because you want you want kind of large creatures give them trample and everything. Ele okay, could it work in elementals? I could see that like give this to like scampering scourger, make them all like two two power in elementals. Maybe I mean. It kind of works there. I don't think it's really worth a card. I don't think that like its effect is really worth three mana. When again, it doesn't, it doesn't trade with anything. It's not. I don't think it's really worth a, a card here. Um. But yeah, again, okay, yeah, rotting Regisaur. So if we're playing it in that kind of deck, like a Rakdos Aggro, playing this with rotting Regisaur and Ember Cleave and that kind of stuff. Still, don't think it's worth a card. I'm going just L. Uh, no, I don't think you want to play this with Cavalcade because your Cavalcades won't trigger anymore.
Yeah, I think that's an L, Ferocity of the Wilds. Sorry, buddy. All right, Fervent Champion. Uh, red for a 1-1 first strike haste. Whenever Fervent Champion attacks another target attacking knight, you control gains plus one, plus zero until end of turn. All right, so... <clears throat> and then equip abilities you activate. The target it costs three less to activate. So one mana, one, one, first strike haste is perfectly reasonable when we have cards like Cavalcade of Calamity. I think this is a good card for Cavalcade of Calamity. It's obviously a good card for knights because uh, it's it's a one drop knight that uh, can pump another knight whenever it attacks. Like that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, you don't need a lot of value out of a one drop. Um, so I think that that's, that's two decks that you want to play it right there. Do you want to play this in like mono red aggro? I'm not so sure there. Um, obviously it works really well with Ember Cleave, uh, being able to just get equipped by Ember Cleave. Um, you know, gotta love that of course. Um, but I think with, with like, do you want to play it in like non, non cavalcade mono red? I'm not so sure there. This is just a, a one, one. I'm not so sure about that, but I think, you know, if we think about Knights, and Cavalcade, that could be two cards that it sees a good amount of play there. I don't think this is really like an A. I don't really want to give it an A, but I mean, I guess it's close. I want to go, I'm going to go A minus here for the Fervent Champion. Um, oh no, this is perfect in Cavalcade. I was saying it would go in uh, the uh, why the not Cavalcade decks. Uh, because, it, because a 1-1 one, one body isn't like, you know, they play a 2-2, a two, two, it gets, starts getting you can't get through like a one one it's hard for a one one body to connect all the time but they do work very well together that is true they they stack they stack perfectly together but i mean i would rather have get to lava runner i think that's like always like a two power like in a non cavalcade like red deck that's not a knight deck I'd rather be playing like Get Two Lava Runner. Obviously, Get Two Lava Runner is not in the format anymore. But I'm just saying, if you think about how strong Get Two Lava Runner is, I think this card is worse than that in like the other mono red deck. So like, um, you know, I'm just using that as like a comparison for like a card that people know. Yeah, but yeah, it's good. Good with knights. Good with um, good with cavalcade. Let's. I'm giving it an A minus. Does work well with Torben. It's very good with Torben. That is true. That is true. All right, fine. Y'all convinced me. Let's go A. The Torben comment, that convinced me that they can go in another deck. All right, we're going A. <clears throat> All right, Fires of Invention. Yeah, I, th I think the I think the, the monkey is better than Fervent Champion. Like, I'd, I'd rather have Diagonal Monkey. Than fervent champion but anyway uh fires of invention and i'm talking about that in in again a non-knight non-cavalcade deck but with knight and cavalcade this card this card's pretty good three in a red enchantment you can cast spells only during your turn and you can cast no more than two spells each turn then you may cast spells with CMC less than or equal to the number of lands you control without paying their mana costs. This card is sweet. This is a cool build around card. Is this going to be like tier one standard? I highly doubt it, but oh man, my whole mouse pad is just like soaking wet now. So if I ever try to put my hand down, it's just water. Ugh. Yeah, this is definitely a, a build around. Um, kind of thing uh i think so like a playable build around card we go with a c i think that's where we're kind of at here i like the card a lot though so i'm going to give it a c plus but let's talk about the card now um it has it does it does have potential for sure uh vivian's art yeah it could work with arc bow how you can use so yeah you want you want to be able to spend your mana for other things besides spells because you can you can cast your spells that have uh, that have CMC less than or equal to the number of lands you control without paying their mana cost. So you don't have to use your lands to, to to play your spells. So yeah, a card like Vivian's Arcbow, for example, would be really good. This with a you said this with Red Cavalier is ridiculous. Yeah, because you can use Red Cavalier for your mana. That's a mana sink. You can use that as a mana sink. You know, so basically, yeah, it fixes color. That's true. 
It is a five color deck enabler. That is true. That is true. Good call there. Um, and so then, uh, yes, Golos is casting. So yeah, activating Golos, that doesn't work because that's still casting. You can only cast two spells a turn. So yeah, I didn't think about the five color enabler. That is really nice. That is really nice. Um, yeah, but that's that's the thing is it lets you play. So you want expensive spells with this. Because, yeah, you can you play this on turn four, and then you immediately can play another four-mana card. On turn five, you can play two five-mana cards. Turn six, you can play two six-mana cards. So you want expensive cards in your deck, uh, and you want ways to use your mana with your lands. Like a card like Arch of Orozco would have been perfect with this, um, or even just the lands that, that you sacrifice and do stuff. Like, that, that would have been per- like those would have been perfect. Those all rotated out, you know, like those, car- those lands from Dominaria. I don't remember the name of that cycle. Um, but yes, hip, exactly, Hippie. You, this into Drawn from Dreams is awesome. Yeah, Drawn from Dreams works really well. So like expensive card draw spells is good because you do want to keep your hand filled because you even though you can only cast two spells a turn, you want your hand filled so that uh, you have like two really impactful cards to, to play. So yeah, expensive card draw spells are really good here. So cards like Drawn from Dreams is awesome. Um yeah, like Spectral Sailor can get you, get you. That's a good mana sink. Um, that's that's very good. I know you don't really want to sacrifice your lands with this in play. I, I know that, but you just want to be able to use your mana, kind of thing. It really, I was thinking like Arch of Araska, uh, thing like that. Yeah, you get the new castles. So yeah, well, yeah, I guess yeah. So we'll see like how the castles can work with this. The red castle makes a one one. So yeah, the red castle uh, works very well with this. Um, you know, being able to use your mana there, making a 1-1 one, one while you play your spells for free. But yeah, I love Drawn from Dreams here. Um, this is uh, blue finale draw. For, uh, so for X spells, I I don't know exactly how this works for X. So it works, X is zero. I would expect X to be zero. So yeah, I don't think it would work with X spells. Oh, the red castle doesn't make a creature? or Oh, the white, cra- white castle makes it 1-1. One, one. Sorry. So the white castle makes a one one so that's that's still good but yeah red red castle pumps okay so you can still pump your creatures make one ones all that kind of stuff um but yeah like this okay think about wilderness reclamation think about how much mana wilderness reclamation gives you and how being able to have all that mana you get to do so much crazy stuff this is kind of similar to that Fires of Invention basically doubles your mana, which is kind of like Wilderness Reclamation like doubles your mana, but you had to do all your stuff like instant speed kind of thing. This doubles your mana, but you can only cast two spells a turn. So, But again, I love Drawn from Dreams with this, and especially turn four playing this, then Drawn from Dreams, because Drawn from Dreams finds specific cards that you need. Like if you're playing this in a kind of mid rangey control kind of deck, you can find whatever exact answers you need um, for sure. Uh, it does, if you want to play this and try to do, you know, you can you can play this and then play the Iron Crag Fleet, you know, your four mana thing. Uh, but then, no, that's only your two spells. Then you don't get to do your seven mana thing afterwards. I was going to say you could do those. But you can you can still kind of put those together. But um, Glinthorn Buccaneer works well with this. Uh, possible. I, don't, I guess I don't remember the exact text of Glinthorn Buccaneer to be example. Or to... To be to be honest, so I meant to say sorry. I'm talking a lot. All right, Buccaneer. Whenever you discard a card, it deals one damage to each opponent. You pay to draw a card, activate it only when it's attacking. Eh, it doesn't work that well. It kind of works. Uh, Skargan Hellkite. Skargan Hellkite. Love it. Like this. This with Skargan Hellkite is awesome because you know you get to play your Skargan Hellkite for free, and then you have your four mana to start doing your damage. Yeah, Skargan Hellkite is great. Um. Yeah, love this with Skargan Hellkite. That's a great mana sink. So you want to find mana sinks for your lands, and then you also want card draw. Um, So yeah, like blue-red, draw from dreams, Skargan Hellkite deck. Sign me up. And then uh, you get expensive, like maybe a Jeskai deck where you can maybe play play some sweepers also. You know, maybe you play like Time Wipe, uh, that kind of stuff. Maybe a Jeskai Control kind of thing. Um... Yeah, if you go Gruul, go Biogenic Ooze. There you go. Biogenic Ooze in Gruul. Absolutely. Um, Spectral Sailor, of course. Yep, Spectral Sailor works just fine here. Um, you are, of course, one of your two spells that you cast 
the you can only cast two spells a turn. If you're spending a, if you're doing one of those as a spectral sailor, that's not great. That you know, like you want to you want to be playing really impactful spells here with fires of invention. You don't have to worry about getting stuck with like, oh man, I have two five drops in my hand. You know, getting stuck with too many five drops. Where like, well, you get to play two of those five drops every turn. So I don't think you want null hide ferox with this. Uh, I don't think because even though you could play this, then play null hide. But I think you really want to play spells, like card draw spells. Because with Gruul, you do kind of run the risk of running out of cards. Um, you don't need Wilderness Reclamation with this. I don't think this works that well with it. I mean, you could go this with Wilderness Reclamation with Hellkite or Biogenic Ooze if you want to go crazy there. But I, I kind of feel like the Reclamation is just not really that necessary if you already have like the fires and uh, your five drops and, and everything. Um so, uh, what about dropping Nicol Bolas and instant transform? You could in a historic, you know, Nicol Bolas will rotate. So yeah, if you want to play this in historic and you got seven mana to play it and, and, autom and transform immediately, that could work. Um, yeah, <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, Gling has a good, good point there saying this encourages you to make a very clunky deck being a problem there. So yeah, it does it does encourage you to make a clinky de or clunky deck. But that's why I like Drawn from Dreams with this card. Because if you don't have it in your hand on turn four, you can Drawn from Dreams digs really far to look for it. You know, you get to dig seven cards to look for your fires of invention. Um, I think that this card works just so well with Drawn from Dreams. Uh, yeah, I, l I love those two together. And then, uh, you know, try to get some mana sinks like your Skargon Hellkite and stuff like that. So you're like blue, red... And then what do you want for like your third color, maybe like Jeskai or maybe Teamer, um, things like that. Chandra Tribal, I don't hate. I don't hate. You need some card. You need some good card draw though, because uh, with Fire's Invention, being able to cast two spells a turn, you really do want a good amount of card draw. Uh, so yeah, maybe t like Teamer gives you like eight temples, also where like the temples are kind of doing stuff with your lands. Um, so like teamer caller gives you yeah like gross spiral and then and then eight temples. What's up, Zayeth? So there there's some really cool things to to do here with this with this deck, um, or sorry with with this card. There's some some really cool things to do. Um, I'm giving it so I said I was giving it a C plus, um, because it is kind of like a a build around card here, but I think it's I think it's. A little better than that i mean i could go with b minus but it's we're kind of talking about like one deck i don't think we just throw this in like lots of different decks kind of thing so yeah thank you so much there zayat so that oh that gets us to our sub goal so what the sub goals do is every time i hit 20 total sub goals i do a 12 hour stream that's our third sub goal to hit we're already doing the 12 we already unlocked a 12 hour stream that we're doing on thursday which is the first day of throne of eldraine and now we're at three out of 20 sub goals towards the next one after that. So we'll see if, you know, over the coming days, you know, maybe we'll do another 12 hour stream like a week later. So we'll see. Okay. So yeah, I wanted to talk about Fire's Invention. Awesome card there. All right, Fling. One in a red instant uh, as an additional cost to cast the spell, sacrifice a creature. Fling deals damage equal to the sacrifice creatures power to any target this is definitely like um something that some people will play uh just try to build janky fling decks you'll you'll run into those at you know f and m and stuff um this is not a, a card that i've ever really been a fan of um i don't i don't like it myself uh, i don't really play fling decks but uh it's not very good uh, playing a card that makes you sacrifice your own thing just to do some damage, just to be a remove uh, like a little bit better removal spell than other removal spells. I know there there's like uses for it. You know, it's you respond to a removal spell. Um, instant speed things are less valuable with the fairy in the format, of course. But yeah, I'm giving this a D minus. I won't give it just I won't give it just an L. Even though I kind of want to, we'll go with a D minus because because people will play it. Yep, 
yeah, yes, you can fling rotting regisaurs and dread horde butchers and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> yes, you can target players. Yes, you can you can throw a rotting regisaur to do seven damage to an opponent. Um, but yeah, don't. Not not a fan here. Iron Crag feet, four mana sorcery. That says, uh, add seven red, you can cast only one more spell this turn. Really wish we had this with Star of Extinction. Really wish we just had this this past format. This would have made like Star of Extinction and Haphazard Bombardment a lot better. It would have been a lot easier to play Haphazard Bombardment uh, decks. Um, no, I, I don't want to play. Yeah, I don't think Fling with Chandra's Firebrand is that good. Because that requires you to already have Chandra's Firebrand and a whole bunch of spells, and you know trigger Chandra's Firebrand a bunch, and at that point, like that's those are the games that you win. Like you're not losing those games. You don't need to have an extra card in your hand that wasn't doing anything before that. Then you have like the fling and be like, ha, now I win. No, you you're already doing fine. You already have huge creatures in play. Just just have another spell that helps you kill your opponent. You don't need this thing that's going to be a dead card the other, you know, 60% of games when you don't have your big creature in play. Okay. Um, anyway, so yeah, I would have loved to be able to play this with Haphazard Bombardment, Star of Extinction. Would have loved to have that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm sad that we get it now, but I'll probably do that in Historic. You never know. Um, oh, yeah, this into Mirror March? Love it. Love it. That's a great one, QQ. This with Mirror March? That's a good one. I like that quite a bit. Um, they have the seven mana card that this is built for for the set. I guess I'm passing it. Where is it at? It's probably right next to it or something. Where is this card at? Seven mana. There it is. Sundering Stroke. So like the thing that they want you to, to do is pair it with Sundering Stroke. It's seven mana and it says if it... It deals seven damage divide as you choose among one, two, or three targets. I mean, these two cards just kind of go together, so we're going to kind of talk about them together. If at least seven red mana was spent to cast a spell, instead, Sundering Stroke deals seven damage to each of those permanents and or players. So it's like lucky sevens. You get to do seven damage to three different targets. You know, seven to seven to you, seven to your Planeswalker, seven to your creature kind of thing. Um, and so that's a two-card combo there for four mana with the Iron Crag feats and then the Sundering Stroke. Um, so that's, that's a combo that, that, uh, could be played a little bit, but, um, I'm not huge on, man, if we would have had this, this card with Jaya Ballard could get us to 10 mana. So we could cast apex of power. This would have been a lot easier way to cast apex of power. Uh, no, I think this is three different targets. Yeah. Divide as you choose among one at two or three targets. Wait, could it could it be three target? Could it just be three targets being the same target? Probably not, right? I don't think you can do three targets being the same target. I think that to be three different targets, but it doesn't say the word different. Oh, because that's right, because it's damage divided. Because you can't do damage divided in one target or like three of the same target. So yeah, no. So yeah, they're different targets. So that's that's a thing you could do with this uh, mirror march we talked about. Uh, that's a cool thing to do with this. Um, there's probably some other ones. Uh, Brass's bounty rotates. Um, there's probably some other cool things to do with seven red mana. You can cast like Ugin. Ugin's a really good card. Big Chandra. Um, you know, like those are a couple of good six mana planeswalkers you can cast. Uh, if you want a red finale for five. And then, but you wouldn't want to do that because you can only cast one more spell this turn. Never mind, don't do that. Dracuseth. Dracuseth's a good one. That's a good one there. So yeah, so there's things you can do with this. Um, it's definitely a pretty janky build around card. Uh, I'm going to go like C minus here. It's not really, I, it's kind of playable, but let's go C minus. I would have really liked it a lot more if we had Star... Like, because Star of Extinction is big game. Like, that card is awesome. Even Haphazard Bombardment can do some cool things. You know, just blow up lands from the opponent uh, every turn. So I 
I'm sad we don't get to do that with those two. I'm going to have to try that in, in Historic. All right, Iron Crag Pyromancer. Two and a red. I guess I guess we'll finish talking about this other card down here, Sundering Stroke. Um, so yeah, like this seven mana. Like this is just too too expensive to to be played, honestly. Um, when you, when you compare it to like we just had Star of Extinction that I'd much rather have. Um, however, uh, if we kind of compare this to Kicking Fight with Fire, where Kicking Fight with Fire was nine mana and dealt ten damage divided. This is seven mana, deals seven damage divided. It's a lot easier to get to seven mana. So you you could just play this in like uh, a Teamer Risen Reef, Teamer Elementals Risen Reef that's just ramping, you know. Seven mana is like the next turn after playing um, uh, Cavalier of Thorns, of course. So we could go like Cavalier of Thorns um, and then uh, Sundering Stroke like the next turn. So like that is something you could do. Uh, you're not getting the second part, but it's like, do you want a seven mana removal spell, even though it's a pretty good removal spell? Probably not there. Probably not. Um, it is kind of similar to Jaya's Immolating Inferno. It's, it's kind of similar there. So again, I think I'm going to go like D plus here with this one, or maybe even C minus, like the same rating as Iron Crag Fleet. Um, honestly, I think I have, I have the fleet too, rated too high. Let's go D plus for both of them. So like they're, they're cards that you could really play, but, um, I think they're kind of like scholar of the ages, thought distortion type level there. So I'm going to give both of those cards just D pluses. Okay. Back to where we were, the iron crag pyromancer one in a red for a human wizard. It's an 04, so 3 mana 04, and whenever you draw your second card each turn, it deals 3 damage to any target. That trigger is really valuable. You know, 3 damage to any target, that's Lightning Strike. You know, so you get to cast free Lightning Strikes every time you draw a second card in a turn. You know, so that's only one, that could only happen once a turn. You'd have to draw, a, you know, a second card. So during your turn, you have to draw one extra card. During your opponent's turn, you have to draw two extra turns. Um... But yeah, that is that is a free lightning strike each time. You, I mean, you have to be playing a whole lot of card draw for this to work. Um, are you playing this like with your fires of invention and then card draw and then you like play this plus a card draw thing? Maybe, maybe. I mean, O four does play some good defense. You know, like that. You know, that can block. Like maybe that's where you can you can get this card in. Um. But yeah, then, then just regular cards that you can play this with. I like Royal Scions. I love that. Yep, the Royal Scions, uh, you know, lets you loot every turn. So this this works perfectly with the Royal Scions. Love that. I like it with um, Chandra's Regulator. So Chandra's Regulator, again, you discard a card, draw a card. So, you know, you, you can kind of go with, like, those effects. You can play this and then play Chandra's Regulators, play uh, Royal Scions, Um that kind of stuff like those that works very well um to be able to trigger it on your turn and then yeah you can have like chemistry's insight to trigger it on your opponent's turn um and then uh yeah you could play it in a phoenix deck um that is true and then uh is it thrill he's called thrill of possibilities yeah this this new card play this thing to trigger it there's a lot of ways to trigger this card could be a sideboard card for, for a control deck when your opponent takes out all their removal then you bring in this thing like maybe a blue red fire maybe blue red fires of invention control with like royal scions and stuff and then like they take out their removal then bam you play this thing after sideboard and then you suddenly start doing three damage to any target a lot um so yeah uh this card could see a good amount of play. That's strong. This card could see play. That's what I meant to say. Could see play. Could have play in Feather. So yeah, with Feather you get maybe, maybe, maybe a Feather sideboard card against red decks as just being like an 0-4 also that like, you know, can block and everything. And then your Defiant Strike deals three damage. If you have Season of Growth, 
in play every you know you target something with season of growth you get your three three damage maybe could work it could work there that could work um so i'm gonna go with like a, a b minus i don't think this is like voracious hydra good or scampering scorcher good like you you have to work for this card maybe c plus corpse knight i like it more than like corpse knight you got to work for the card though i'm thinking c plus b minus we'll go b minus it looks cool joust one in a red sorcery choose target creature you control and target creature you don't control the creature you control gets plus two plus one until in turn if it's a knight then those creatures fight each other uh, good limited removal, but that's that's it. Limited card there. Got better options for standard. The Mad Ratter. Um, whenever you draw your second card each turn. Yeah, Gutter, gutter Snipe, though, is a 2-2. Two, two, is a lot more vulnerable than an 0-4. Um, but, yeah, and, and and gutter snipe only does damage upstairs. Like this gives you removal. You know, you get to do you you get to kill creatures with this thing. Um, so like that's that's pretty valuable doing to any target being able to kill creatures. You know, you draw your second card, kill your risen reef. So you can spend your time you can spend your time drawing cards and still killing your opponent's creatures uh, instead of just like drawing cards to look for removal and then using removal. Like that gives you the removal there. All right, so Mad Ratter, uh, four mana, one, two. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create two one, one black rat creature tokens. So this card works perfectly with Priest of Forgotten Gods. If you are activating Priest and you keep this in play, you know, your Priest draws a second card, then you create your two creatures. So then, then your next turn, you get to activate your Priest again, sack these, draw your card, and continue on your merry way there i don't know how we're surviving with our one twos not dying with our two with our one two our two mana one two and our four mana one two how they're not dying um but yeah we could play this in, a, in our rat deck with the, the rat lord but i am not really seeing it four mana if this is like two mana we're kind of talking but four mana i'm giving this a limited rating merchant of the veil is a three mana two three so you can pay three mana and discard a card, then draw a card. That is really expensive. It also has Haggle, um, which is a one red mana. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. So like the Haggle can be a way to turn on your Pyromancer for just like one mana, like immediately after you play. Like so, if you have this combo here, you can play Py Like think about it for four mana. For four mana, you play Pyromancer, and then you haggle, and then you deal three damage to a target. So you basically have Flame Tongue Kavu. So these two together are just Flame Tongue Kavu, basically. <laughs> and then, um, okay, how do the adventure cards work? So when when Merchant of the Veil is in your hand, you may uh, pay the mana for the the adventure card here first before you play the creature. So while this is in your hand, you could spend one mana and you have this instant here where you where it says that. And then if you do that, then th then the card gets exiled. And then while it's in exile, you may cast the creature at any time that you could cast the creature. Um, alternatively, you can just cast the creature first and then you don't get anything with this. And then you don't do the event. You don't send your creature on the adventure. You can just on turn three, spend your three mana, play your two, three. You can do that too. So you have the option there. Okay, um, this is Magic the Gathering's uh, site. This is their site. Uh, to find it, you can just Google um, Throne of Eldraine image card gallery, something like that. Um, yeah, basically, I don't think this card is very playable. However, if you really need it for the, the Pyromancer, you can. Um, but spending a card to then discard a card and draw a card is not worth it. And then you just have like this really bad three mana two three, which again I guess could spend a lot of mana for that. I'm giving this just barely above limited. We're gonna go D minus here, um, but I'm not a fan of the Merchant of the Veil. 
I don't think this card is very important with reanimator stuff. I think you can have better cards than this. All right, Ogre Errant is three and a red for a three, four. Whenever Ogre Errant, Errant, er, probably Errant, I don't know. Whenever the Ogre attacks, another target attacking knight gains menace until end of turn. There are so many knights everywhere. Um, there's so many knights that like the Witcher's Vengeance is going to be playable and limited. Give them knights minus three, minus three. Errant. All right, well, it's, it's getting a limited rating anyway. Opportunistic Dragon. 2RR for a 4-3 flyer. Whenever uh, Opportunistic Dragon enters the battlefield, choose target human or artifact an opponent controls. For as long as Opportunistic Dragon remains on the battlefield, gain control of that permanent, it loses all abilities, and it can't attack or block. This is a crazy one. So we're looking at it. what it's mostly going to be is a 4-mana four 4-3 four, flyer. That's not great. That's like rekindling. This is like rekindling Phoenix that doesn't have the good part of rekindling Phoenix. So it's just that. Um, it is a dragon for Kalia, at least. We need more demons, dragons, and angels. Hear that wizard? We need more of those. At least it's that. Um, but that's about it, the best it has going for it. Uh, four three, you know, that three toughness dies to lots of removal. You know, you get Oath of Kayad and all that kind of stuff. Not a great, not great toughness. Doesn't doesn't get in, into battle uh, very well. If you're playing against like a mono blue artifact deck that's not really playing removal, then boom, here you go. You get to take one of their artifacts and control it for a while while the dragon chills. Um, that's like the best we got. Um, yeah, that's about the best we got here. So I'm going with a I guess a D minus. You could you could sacrifice the thing you steal. There are some decent humans in the set. Like your charming prince and stuff and there's there's some de decent humans, but yeah, you can only take humans or artifacts and yeah, maybe you can um, you can like, who, what about, was it wish claw talisman? You go search up for opportunistic dragon and then you play the dragon and then you take the wish claw talisman back. And then what if, what if they kill the dragon? Does the talisman immediately go back to them? I mean, it's your talisman. Do you just keep it? It does go back to them. I'm not sure. Would it? Honestly, don't know. I would think. Yeah, I would think it would go back to the owner, right? And you're the owner. And then I know you can't use the the talisman while the dragon's in play, but whenever the dragon, you know, your dragon's gonna die. Like they're gonna have to kill your dragon. It's a four three, right? Like it's gonna be in combat and stuff. And then whenever it dies, so don't you just get the talisman back? So now you you just kind of. Yeah, it would stay with you, right? So there you go. So it you can't do anything with the, the talisman anymore whenever the dragon's in play, but you just get your talisman back and they don't get it. And now your next turn, you can wish claw for like another dragon and put it into play, grab your talisman back. I don't I don't know how that works. Cause yeah, I don't yeah, I don't, I don't know how that would work exactly. I don't think yeah, so I think that would kind of work. So you could just go grab like two dragons first and you know, like your dragon dies, so then you go get another dragon and then you get to use it the third time. So you don't have to worry about, you know, you know getting, I don't know, that's, that's just another way we could do that. Yes, Ashiok stops Wishclaw, Karn stops Wishclaw, but your opponents can attack and kill those Planeswalkers and then use Wishclaw. It's not like those, they, it's not like they stop Wishclaw for the rest of the game. They just stop it for a little bit until those Planeswalkers leave the battlefield which that's what happens in magic. Things die. So that's why you grab the dragon because then the dragon will die and then you get your get to use your wish claw again. See? Now now we're finding opportunities opportunities for this dragon. 
I'm bumping it up to a D. Raging Red Caps, a three mana, one, two, double strike. And it's going to be a limited card. That's all I got there. There's better three mana goblins, even if you want to make a goblin deck. Knight deck now. I mean, if you want to Voltron up your double strike creature, I suppose. I think we can probably do better. How do we get Sparky to kill our dragons? <laughs> um, all right, we got red cap melee. Uh, red instant, deal four damage to target creature or planeswalker. If a non-red permanent is dealt damage this way, you sacrifice a land. Is there any card that says you can't sacrifice stuff? Is that a thing in standard? I don't think that's a thing in standard. But mono red, like think about like mono red cavalcade or just mono red decks, especially mono red cavalcade. Their sideboard is pretty garbage anyway. Like that doesn't really have like 15 Tamio. No, Tamio doesn't work because Tamio is just opponent effects. Um, the, so Cavalcade decks already have pretty garbage sideboards. So like this, this could be a, a playable sideboard card that's you know really good for mirror matches. Um, one mana deal four. Uh, the four damage to a Planeswalker is really important in a Cavalcade mirror because Chandra Fire Artisan? No. Chandra Acolyte of Flame. There we go. Three mana Chandra Acolyte of Flame. Starts with four loyalty. So red cap melee, perfect to de to deal with that. Deals with Chandra Spitfire, you know. It's so it's it's perfect. Like it deals with everything. So it's a it's a perfect card for the mirror there. Um, so yeah, really like it there. Uh, you could also like just bring it in against like you know a Mardu Knights deck or you know just whatever other red deck. You know, kill a Crackling Drake. You know, have some fun with it there. Um, so uh, you know, playable sideboard card. Um, I think this is, I think it's better than like a Sir Eulen Drake sideboard card. Maybe, maybe just a little bit better. We're, let's go C plus. Perfectly fine sideboard card, but not nothing special. But love it. And uh, good against Boros too. That's a good call, Bo uh, Boros Feather. All right, maybe this is moving up to a B. All right, moving up to a B. Because honestly, I think this is basically the same level as Devout Decree. I said Devout Decree is a B, a moderately played sideboard card. I think that's where we're at here. Because yeah, kill a feather for one mana. That's a, that's another matchup besides Cavalcade that this is good against. That's another really good matchup, and we'll see how good it is against like knights and stuff. But yeah, lo love that it kills Feather and Chandra Acolyte of Flame. And then yeah, late game you could you you may just have your extra land that you can sacrifice. It's not like it has to do damage to a red thing. Also, maybe you can late game. Um, red cap raiders two and a red for a goblin warrior. That's a three two. Whenever red cap raiders attacks, you may tap an un an untapped non human creature you control. If you do, red cap raiders gets plus one plus one and gains trample until end of turn. That may be the last card I'll ever. That may be the last time I'll ever read that card. Limited. Rimrock Knight. One in a red for a 3-1 that can't block. That's really bad. What do we got over here? Boulder Rush. This is a red instant uh, that says target creature gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. Another L. All right. Robber of the Rich. One in a red for a 2-2 two -two Reach Haste human archer rogue mythic whenever robber the rich attacks if defending player has more cards in hand than you uh, exile the top card of their library during any turn you attacked with a rogue you may cast that card and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell okay oh yeah i bet this is crazy and vintage for sure um this uh ooh, ooh try scheming symmetry with with robber of the rich okay i could see that i could see that like ooh hmm 
that could that could work. You never know. <clears throat> that's that's pretty pretty janky, but I like that. Okay, so yeah, this card's awesome. It doesn't really have downsides. Like two mana, two two haste. Uh, has reach also. Why not? Um, but two mana, two two haste. That's playable. But the fact that you can get extra cards with it makes it even better. You can even suicide attack it in if if you need to, um, and and get that. So, all right. So the defending player has to have more cards in hand than you to to trigger it. So it can't be even. It can't be you have three cards, they have three cards. So it only triggers if they have more than you. Okay. So it's not triggering all the time. And then you exile the, the you know so you exile that card, and then you may cast it. Uh, any turn that you attacked with a rogue. So you're talking about casting. So if it hits a land, you don't get to do anything. So you don't get to play lands with this. You can only cast spells. So ha so not only, they have to have more cards in hand than you, and then you have to hit a spell so you can cast the spell. And then you have to have the man. of course you have to have the mana to cast the spell. And that turn that you have the mana to cast the spell, you have to have attacked with a rogue. So if you, let's say you attack with this on turn two and exile a four drop, and by the time, and you know, you're like, okay, well, I don't have four mana yet. And so that, you know, so, you know, you attack with this on like turn two, um, and and they have more cards than you, you know, so they have to have more cards than you. That happens, and then you exile a four drop. So you don't exile a uh, a land. So you're like, okay, cool, we exile a four drop. And then you know, you're like, all right, go. And then they like, you know, shock it or whatever. They use a removal spell on it. And then by your turn four, if you don't have another rogue to attack with, you'll just never be able to cast that card. So how many times are you actually casting a card with this? So it's, if you kind of think of like, I keep on saying so. I'm sorry about that. That's just a habit. Um, if, you, if you think about like hitting a land half of the time, it's not going to be half, but we'll just say half. Let's say you hit a land half of the time and then another, you know, part of the time, I don't even know, a another fourth of the time uh or let's say another half of the time that you don't hit a land you don't have the mana to play your spell and so then another uh so you only get to play like the card that you exile like a half of the time then because you only have the mana a half of the time and then another half of the time that you don't have the mana to cast the spell right away you can cast it later but you you because uh, you get to attack with a rogue because you actually get the mana later, but sometimes at that part, you don't actually have the mana later to cast it. We may not we may not be casting spells that often with this. Um, but like y'all are saying, if you get one spell, that's great. You know, like Direfully Daredevil is a, was a really good card. You get one spell with that. If you ever get two spells with this thing, that's insane. Um, it's not legendary. You get to just play it right away. You don't have to like wait on it like you did with Daredevil. You just start, you know, just play it, attack, trigger. Um, it's not like Thief of Sanity that you have to like untap with it and then and then attack and try to have it survive and that kind of stuff. It just triggers on attacking. So yeah, I mean, this card's awesome. I mean, this is an A. I think this is an A. Um, but I'm just kind of telling you that I think that people are overrating the cards some in the fact that they think that they're going to be casting more cards than what they are. I, I still think like this card's a, an A. I think it's really good. But I'm saying that you're probably only casting a card like a third of the time you attack would be my guess. Or, you know, 40% of the time. You know, something like that. Like you're maybe not casting cards that often. Um, so I'm, I'm just saying like don't think that... I mean, because... I didn't even say that, like, you know, half, you know, like, what if your opponent just has the same amount of cards than you? So you have to have your opponent have less cards with you. Then you also have to not exile a land. And then you have to exile a card that you, that you want to cast, A, can cast B, and, and can cast on a turn that you attacked with a rogue, C. It's a lot of things that you got to go through for that. Um, so I'm just saying, be prepared to not cast your spell a lot. Be it, be prepared to attack and not even exile a spell a good amount. So, just saying those. I'm still giving it an A, though. Yeah, uh, I think blue-red rogues, I guess that could be a thing. I like it with, um, I think it works really well with Royal Scions. You know, uh, 
give it like that first strike and stuff, especially if you're going blue red. I like it with Rankle. Rankle is an awesome rogue to that you get to attack with. Um, yeah, so you know maybe maybe red black rogues too. Who knows? All right, Scorching Dragonfire, deal three damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that creature or planeswalker would die this turn, exile it instead. So we Lava Coil is only doing three damage instead of four now, but it's an instant and it also hits planeswalkers. It's definitely important to hit planeswalkers in this standard format where they decided to print 382 planeswalkers in one set. It's, it's crazy that War of the Spark had that many planeswalkers, but it did. So we, we definitely need to be able to have spells that deal with Planeswalkers. This is just another A here. It's a card that we'll see a lot of standard play, multiple decks. Uh, so this is just a very easy A. Searing Barrage. Um, yeah, it's, it's worse than Lightning Strike. I would rather have the ability to deal damage upstairs with my Burn Spell than Exile. But there are going to be times where you're going to be like, man, I'm I'm glad that that Exile instead of dealing damage upstairs, you know, getting rid of that Cavalier Thorns or whatever. <laughs> All right, Searing Barrage, five mana instant, deal five damage to target creature. And if you spend, and then it has Adamant, that deals three damage to the creature's controller as well. So that one at five mana is going to be a limited card. We'll give that an L for limited. Seven Dwarves, two mana, two, two. You get, uh, you can have up to seven cards named Seven Dwarves in your deck, and they get plus one, plus one for each other creature named Seven Dwarves you control. That's just a really nice, flavorable card. I think the first time that you build a Seven Dwarves deck and you play your Seven Dwarves and you have like three others in your hand, you play it on turn two. You have like three others in your hand, right? Because you got seven in your deck. And then they just play a Legion's End. And they exile all your seven dwarves. You're going to be sad. Legion's End is going to make seven dwarves. It's like, it should be called Seven Dwarves End. It's just the end of the seven dwarves. That's all it is. I'm going D minus. I don't want to give this an L because this card's cool. I'll give it a D minus. Yep, D minus because of flavor win. <laughs> Not bad as a one of. <laughs> uh, Skull Knocker Ogre, three and a red for a four three. Whenever Skull Knocker Ogre deals damage to an opponent, that player discards a card at random. If that player does, they draw a card. So you hit your opponent with the card, they discard a card at random, and then draw a card. That's maybe, I guess, playable and limited. I guess. I guess. All right. Uh, slaying Fire, two and a red. Um, instant it deals three damage to any target so this is lightning strike for three mana now instead of two that's a big deal adding that extra mana that's a huge huge downside like that's that's so much worse it does have adamant if at least three red mana was spent to cast this spell it deals four damage instead so this card is is really unplayable outside of mono red decks uh, we're you're not playing this ever outside of a mono red deck for three damage three mana to do three damage that's that is not constructed that's not standard and playable so you have to be a mono red deck and then at that point we're spending three mana to do four damage to anything i still i don't really like it that much um it's okay three mana is just so much mana for a spell like this um it's okay. It like I think a lot of people think this is just like jam 4x like lightning strike kind of thing. But this is a lot worse than lightning strike. 3 3 mana compared to 2 is a huge difference. Um think of all like think of like the good 3 mana cards that we have for red. Uh that's and like 3 mana for red like that's a lot of mana. Um I I don't love it. 
I don't like it um, that much. Um, Steamkin can cast it. That is true. Steamkin's just great. I don't think you put bad cards in your deck because Steamkin is great kind of thing. But I don't know if this is a bad card. It's not It's not bad. Like, four damage is nice. That is a lot of damage. You know, so Mono Red Burn, of course. Uh, but, like, Cavalcade, like, I don't think Cavalcade plays this card. Like, I think Cavalcade wants to play Chandra Spitfire and uh, Chandra Acolyte of Flame as their three drops, and then maybe Legion War Boss if you want, like, some more three drops. I think that's what, I think that's what uh, they want to do. I don't think this is a Cavalcade card, so, like, we're playing, like, a different Mono Red Aggro deck. Um, three mana is just a lot. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't like it that much. So, I mean, it's a card. You'll definitely see this in standard. I'm I'm saying I don't like it, but that doesn't mean that people aren't going to be playing this card. I so I'm going to go with like B minus as a as a rating here. But removal spells like this are just like spells like this usually get a really high rating. You know, as as you can tell, I just keep, said this other this scorching dragon fire is an easy A. I guess I'll say B, but I I'm not a fan. I think it's the kind of thing that I think a lot of people will play this card right away, and then maybe we'll start to see less less of it over time. But I think right away people are just going to be jamming this card in their deck, and and then uh, losing games because they just have a couple of three drops in their deck and wonder why their deck's a little slow. Uh, I don't want this in Chandra Tribal. I don't want the three mana card. I would rather just play uh, like the four damage upstairs isn't as important. Um, you have. You have like the Chandra removal spell that can do five damage whenever you have a Chandra in play. Like, give me that. Give me Lava Coil. Lava Coil is in standard. Um, give me those. Uh, give me Scorching Dragon Fire. That extra mana, that's rough. Hey, Daniac. Um,. Okay, now rewind a little bit. Ruolin, that is very fair. There is one reason, yeah, there, there's definitely a reason why I'd want to play this in Chandra Tribal now is because of Questing Beast. I, I've i been talking for a while. I kind of forgot about Questing Beast while I was talking about that. Questing Beast is certainly a reason to play this card. That's a reason where you're like, Darn it, I have to play this stupid slaying fire that I don't want to play because Questing Beast is so darn strong. That you need, you know, like Lava Coil is not instant speed. You can't take your hit from Questing Beast because it kills your Chandra. You still have you'd still have your, you know, so like I don't know if we still play it because you still have the Chandra removal spell. I should learn the name of that card. Whatever that card's called. The Chandra removal spell. Chandra's Triumph, thank you. Chandra's Triumph right over here. You still have Chandra's Triumph, this one right here. So you're still kind of fine there. <clears throat> but maybe, maybe I play it because of that card. <sighs> okay. Uh, Sundering Stroke, we already talked about. So I already, already talked about that one. Uh, Sir Kara the Bold. Uh, we talked about Sundering Stroke during... I guess if you're watching this later on YouTube, if you kind of skipped ahead to that, we talked about during Iron Iron Crag feat. We talked about it back there. All right, so Kara the Bold. Whenever Sir Kara the Bold or an instant or sorcery spell you control deals damage to a player, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. It also has tap, deal one damage to any target. This card isn't, like, it's not a bad card. This is very, I mean... These this cycle, this five mana sir cycle, has a lot of pretty good cards. They're just overcosted for standard, honestly. Like when you compare them to like Cavaliers at five mana. Um, but this is a, a useful card. Uh, I think these are going to be awesome and limited. I think limited are going to be like all about these cards. Like I think that's a great card for limited, but. It's just not quite for standard with five mana. So I'm going to give that an L. Uh, thrill of Possibility, one in a red, uh, instant additional 
cost to cast this spell, discard a card, draw two. So this is just an upgraded Tormenting Voice, gives Tormenting Voice instant speed. Uh, a real big problem with Tormenting Voice is if it gets countered, because if you have this get countered, you're just spending two mana to discard a card. And then if it's counter, you don't get to draw your card. So being instant speed, it helps you to play around counter spells easier. Uh, so that's that's really nice there. Um, but yeah, I would I would give this like a B. I think I think this is a good amount of standard play in a support role. I think this is just kind of kind of a B, uh, maybe a B minus. Maybe it doesn't see like that much standard play, but it's I'll go with a B. I mean, there's it's a it's a decent card. You know, I think it's a it's a better tormenting voice. And now we don't have charter course in the format anymore, which is which was an even better version of this kind of card. So we'll go with a B. All right, Torbran Thran of the Red Fell. One red, red, red for a 2-4 legendary creature, Dwarf Noble. It's already all pretty sweet. If a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. I hate this card already. Yeah, all right. So I have to say that somebody asked me about this card like right, you know, right after it was uh previewed on stream hadn't really given the card that much thought i was just like ah four mana two four i was like if i'm if i'm i was thinking like okay i'm playing grixis control i want them to play like a four mana two four because i can easily use a removal spell on it before it like does damage to me and stuff <clears throat> but honestly this card is really good we're playing it in like basically a mono red deck of course with the the three red pips but it has an immediate impact on the game. You play it, you have you have your creatures out, you attack with your creatures, all your creatures have plus two power, basically, um, immediately. So it's it's basically like a like gives all your creatures plus two plus zero as soon as you play it. So like if you if you have three mana Chandra in play, and then you play this, and then you make two one ones, those those are now like three ones effectively, because they're gonna be dealing three damage each. If you have uh Cavalcade of Calamity. I, I'm trying to say Torbran. I'm sorry. Billfire. Speaking's hard for this long. If you have Cavalcade of Calamity, each Cavalcade trigger is doing three damage for each trigger. That just means you're dead. That's that's all that means. <laughs> you can just read that as if if your opponent has mul if they have like multiple creatures they get to attack with and cavalcade and then play Torbran. You die. That's just the game's over. Uh, this does work with Flame Sweep. Yes, Flame Sweep would do four damage to everything. Um, that would kill your Torbran. But yeah, any red source that deals damage, uh, you play this. If you have six mana Chandra and you do the minus three to do three to every creature, you're doing six to every creature. Of course, you're killing your Torbran, but I'm just saying. Or you're doing five, sorry. You're doing two extra damage. Um. But yeah, like this card's really good. It's it's a card like they gotta kill right away because if you don't, then all your stuff does does extra damage. You know, shock does four, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, oh yeah, it doesn't do. Sorry, sorry, it doesn't do damage to your stuff. Sorry. So yeah, so flame sweep. Sorry, so flame sweep and Chandra does extra damage to them and not to your stuff. Sorry. So yeah, this is this is uh yeah this card is is really good. Uh, it is a legend. It is a four mana legend. Y you're probably not jamming four of them. You don't really want to, you know, have multiples. But it's the thing of like whenever your deck is doing, like if you're playing like a red aggro deck and it's doing its thing, and then you just top out with this card, you can kill people really, really quickly. Um, but yeah, it's not really a, a card. You know, you don't really want like two of these in your opener. So I don't know if you want to play four kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so as far as a grade, um, a card that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks, but it's not really a four of, so that's why I kind of don't want to give it an A cause I don't think it's really a four of anywhere. Um, let's go a minus, but that card's really good. Oh, scampering scourger with this card is insane. Um, honestly, could you, could you play like. Like, just play this in Teamer Elementals. You know, if you want to play, like, Teamer Elementals is usually playing Neoform. Like, imagine, you know, having, like, a Scampering Scourger in play or, uh, 
you have the Thunderkin Awakener that's about to put a Scampering Scourger in also, and then you go turn just Neoform, Risen Reef into this thing, boom, attack for like millions of damage. That can be a thing. That can be a thing. You just got one of them in there. All right, our last card is the Weasel. The Weasel back, red cap. One mana, one one, Goblin Knight. I think this is kind of only playable in Cavalcade, maybe. I don't think I like it over other options in standard right now I'm gonna give it an L maybe you could put it in a cavalcade deck but I don't think so I think we got better one mana one ones to be playing than the weasel back red cap yeah banneret is better than this yes goblin banneret is and I don't think that's good enough either so I'm giving this an L cool card though but yeah not for standard Okay, that's red. Let's check out um, our ratings here, see what our top five cards were. Uh, Torbran, I gave an A minus. Um, we gave a B to Thrill of Possibility, B to Slaying Fire. I gave an A to Scorching Dragon Fire. Maybe I'm a little high on that card. But I, I like me some good old removal spells. I feel like that's just going to be a, a pretty standard playable card um you know very similar to lava coil you know i would think you i think we'd probably give lava coil an a right like lava coil is everywhere i think it's kind of similar it does fight with rob with a uh, lava coil for a spot though so it does have like harsh competition with lava coil so that does kind of maybe that should bump it down to like a minus but i just said a um the robber of the rich of course was an a Fervent Champion is an A. And then Bone Crusher Giant was an A. So those are the top five cards. Robber of the Rich, Bone Crusher Giant, the Scorching Dragonfire, Torbran, and Fervent Champion. As far as what order, I think I want to go Bone Crusher number one. Maybe Bone Crusher one, Robber two, Fervent Champion three, Dragonfire four, and Torbron five. I think that's gonna be my order there, but you know who knows? We're splitting hairs. There, those cards are good. Um, so there we go. So that's Mono Red. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And please leave some comments. Let me know uh, what you think of the, the rating so far. Let me know uh, what cards that uh, you like more than I do or that you think I'm overrating. Uh, feel free to let me know if we, if we missed anything here in chat. And uh, also, you know, feel free to let me know your top five cards and all that kind of stuff. What cards are you really ex are excited to build around and play and all that kind of stuff? Uh, of course, don't forget to check out the other colors, white, blue, and black if you missed those. Or if you're all caught up, head on over to green. It's going to be our last color and then multicolor artifacts and lands all together in the last video. So thank you so much for watching uh, the red part here of our Throne of Eldraine Brewers set review. And I'll see you for the next color.